Okay, my friends, it's Roger, and here I have questions for physicists. I, I, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I think I... This is what I think. This, I know, is pulsed red laser, from just a cheap pulsed red laser. It's actually this right here. It's just a cheap pulse construction laser. But it shoots out light. That's red laser light. And this appears to be accelerating that same wave which was light and it was a wave and now we are seeing a particle emerge from the wave as it stretched forward because we create a venturi over here and that forces the particles to go through there extremely fast it's just like a nozzle on a hose identical and it pulls the particle out of the wave so it appears to be accelerating to me this appears to be plasma and I can see the blacks separate from the whites and I'll show you why I say that and what I mean by that when this comes through the accelerator here and then it starts to settle down first it creates these they appear to be Higgs fields anyway that's what they look like now when it, and then it slows down and then the particle becomes visible now when I say particle I believe that's a photon and when I say photon I mean two electrons back to back one's up and one's down and then then it settles down they only show for two two waves now this appears to be a new strange looking particle we're gonna to have to discuss that later but it all falls into this theory that all there is is electrons they build together to make protons and neutrons and photons and all of the things that are our elements right? so every one of these in between each one of these there's literally thousands and thousands of different positions in electrons okay now we know they say there's a giant mystery inside of every atom well they do realize that not, things are not correct now and they're racing to prove their own vision is correct there's two you know it says no one really knows what happens inside an atom but two competing groups of scientists think they figured it out and they're racing to be the one that got it right now here's what we know for sure however this is not correct what we know for sure they say whiz, electrons whiz around orbitals in an atom's outer shell. I, I can, well, I agree with that. All right, then there's a whole lot of empty space. I agree with that. And then right in the center of that space, there's a tiny nucleus. I agree with that. A dense knot of protons and neutrons. I do not agree with that. That gives the atom most of its mass. A neutron and a proton are not gigantic particles. They are just masses of electrons. That's my theory, and it works. And, and Lepton University does not work. University LA does not work. So they know that they, they, there's extra particles they can't account for, and these people have no clue about it yet. They say they're bound by what's called the strong force, and the numbers of those protons and neutrons determine whether that is iron, oxygen, or xenon. xenon. Well, all it is is a mass of particles that shake until they lock in and then then that's stable but in between there and the next time they lock in it might be this big and it's shaking like oh boop, and it locks in out here and there might be some way down in the bottom they shake and they lock in way down here that's what these are because between every one of these particles there's a bunch of neutrons and part I mean there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of these little bitty particles so when they put these through the gigantic collider they get debris coming out of their ears because they're working with things that are thousands and thousands of times bigger than the particles I work with which is light it's the smallest particle there is so I don't have to dig through debris I can see exactly what happened and the stuff that happens is pretty phenomenal like this that's the red laser light coming at us this particle is being crushed and turned blue which is a much higher energy potential than these but it steps back down to the red because I believe these particles change sizes as they get bigger and bigger and then they get outside of the visible realm and they're so heavy that they hurt you ultraviolet and so forth 
All right, don't forget now, I say an electron is a dipole, but it's got one side that's powerful and one side that's just a carrier. That black, I'm going to show you, that can separate, and the black doesn't change its characteristics. It stays a dot just like that. The white part explodes like a bomb. So I don't know if it's strong and weak charges. I don't know. But here is what the uh, electron flood theory is. He's got that a brass ring and then he's got a positive and negatives all together in here but he's got excessive negative and then he's got a, a, a negative here that wants to get into where the positive is but the excessive negative keeps it at bay so here it goes this is this is literally um, quantum mechanics all right so there now he's making his his electron flooded core all right, now he's going to bring a magnet up to it, which is another negative. Bang, there it is. Now, what he's doing now is just basic matter, just hanging around, you know, having a good time. No real basic interactions. Now, when you start shaking it, it will mean that somebody else is coming in and forcing into it, or he is coming, forcing into somebody else's regions. And that is what we call heat. And then when that thing goes flying off into Never Never Land, oop, there it goes. It goes, shh, that means it's light. Okay, my friends, I think I probably showed you this before, but in a much more expanded version. Now, this is a, a tight shot on the Venturi. And as you can see, there is absolutely no darkness in here whatsoever. As you recall, we started out with, uh, hold on a second, this is, um, we started out with these kind of pro photons, all right, back to back, up and down dipoles. I call those electrons, and we can separate those, and here is the separation, and it is an extremely interesting separation, because the white is the power, and the black is just a carrier. It's like the weak force and the strong force. Here's what happens. See these little dots, the little black dots? Before we saw them, they were part, they were attached together. So what happens is when they concuss, the white ones explode like bombs. The black ones just say, okay, no problem. We'll just get out of the way. You guys fight it out. And they just, they come around outside and then they reattach somewhere down the road. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing. Uh, those dots are dots. Those are black dots. What do we see here? We see a splash, an explosion, a catastrophe of white. What do we see here? Nothing. Nah, just go about your business. We'll have, just hang out. They, they didn't change shape. It's not a big splash of blackness. Why? They appear to have no, no interaction other than just to be able to carry the whites with them. That's what we saw. I don't see how you can see it any other way. You see, there's the accelerator. There they are, back to back, the reds, and uh, and they split up. We saw we saw what happens when they charge separate. Now the greens do the same thing. Now the greens go way out. The the accelerators back here. They the reds crash real early. The greens go way out, but they're the same structure. Okay, that's the green. The red and the green looks the same, so I'm just asking questions, hoping to engage. Thank you.